All right guys, Murph's here. And today I wanna to talk about the 7.5 by 55 millimeter Swiss surface cartridge. I wanna discuss some of its history, go into some of its technical specifications, follow that up with some contextual data, and then do a little comparison before it's all said and done. Now, let's go ahead and get started with history. The origins of the 7.5 millimeter by 55 millimeter Swiss service Extend back to 1875 when a gentleman named Edward Rubin was trying to develop a small diameter high speed bullet for the Swiss military. Now, so they keep in mind, guys, we're talking about 1875, we're talking about solidly in the black powder era. And one of the issues with black powder is that it doesn't necessarily burn slow enough to generate the higher pressures that we see in smokeless powder, which is why smokeless powder was such a beneficial technological advancement for its time period. So for the most part, most manufacturers were stuck at around 1900 feet per second for velocity. And this required a lot of large diameter projectiles of very heavy weight. So we're talking like minimum 40 caliber and 300 grains on up. And this being because if you can't get velocity, you still have to generate energy. And in order to be able to achieve energy, you're going to have to utilize mass. Now, the problem with that is if you're trying to shoot out to greater distances, your projectile has this very rainbow-like trajectory, which means that you have to have these really tall rear sights in order to be able to make the adjustments necessary to be able to make impacts on targets at that distance. So there was a lot of interest in being able to develop high-velocity, small-caliber projectiles. The, the resources just weren't there. So Mr. Rubin's design kind of sat on the shelf for a little while up until 1886, in which the French unveiled smokeless powder. Now this touched off a bit of an arms race that we've discussed quite frequently in these cartridge as well as military rifle videos that I've done in the past. However, the Swiss were more than ready to jump into the cartridge boom with their 7.5 millimeter Swiss. So, Edward Rubin would wind up getting paired with a fellow named Schmidt. They would develop the Schmidt Rubin rifle and that would go into Swiss service. Now, the cartridge would wind up seeing some updates as other bullet technologies came online during this time period. What we eventually wind up with is the GP11 cartridge or the Gewehr Patron 1911 cartridge. And this is pretty much the best iteration of the 7.5 by 55 millimeter Swiss, at least in military service. And it's actually taking advantage of pretty much every technological advantage that was available at the time. Which makes this truly remarkable. So first off, we have smokeless powder. Now the projectile is moving at roughly 25, 2600 feet per second. In addition to that, after the development of smokeless powder, we have the development of Spitzer type ammunition, which allows for an even flatter trajectory to the bullet by giving them more aerodynamic shape. So this was also introduced into the 7.5 by 55 millimeter Swiss. Now, another invention from Edward Rubin was actually full metal jacket ammunition, of which this would be an early adopter. For the most part, a lot of military bullets at this time were made from Cupro nickel, which while not bad, didn't necessarily give the same bonding characteristics that are involved in full metal jacket ammunition. Now, many militaries by World War II would switch over to full metal jacket and ammunition, but not very many militaries went into World War I with full metal jacket ammunition, let alone, you know, Spitzer type ammunition was more or less the standard for most militaries by World War I, but there were still a couple of countries utilizing 6.5 millimeter cartridges that did not find themselves readily adaptable to Spitzer type shapes and velocities that stuck with the original round nose projectiles. So in a lot of ways, the GP-11 is already a very forward thinking cartridge. That's before we even get to the fact that this had standard a boat tail design. Now, the great thing about boat tail ammunition, we've talked about this in my What Makes Bullets Accurate video, which if you're interested in that, I'll throw the link in the description. The boat tail changes the aerodynamics of the projectile, which it, it causes the projectile to produce less drag as it travels through the air. This is very beneficial when it comes to not just having a fighter shooting trajectory, maintaining more energy out to distance, but also as the bullet tapers off on velocity and crosses the transonic barrier, it will maintain a more stable trajectory, which is pretty important if you're trying to take long range shots. So this is really, these features are really setting this bullet aside overall. Now, some people would call this a match grade round, and technically that's not true. 
It was still a mass-produced ammunition. It was still a standard service ball cartridge. It just happened to have a better design than the vast majority of ball ammunition out on the market. The militaries, militaries would still be using flat-based projectiles going into World War II and beyond. So there's, it's quite remarkable what the Swiss preference in the overall design of this bullet. Now the GP-11 would serve through World War I, World War II, all the way up into the 90s. Ammunition was still being manufactured and the last lots would be produced in the 1990s and then eventually sold off as surplus in which it was a very popular target shooting cartridge in military rifle, you know, surplus military rifle competitions and the like. Since then, manufacture of the 7.5 55mm Swiss has really been a niche product from a couple of different manufacturers, but not nearly as widespread as 30-06, 6.5 Creedmoor, a lot of those other types of cartridges. All right, guys, that pretty much covers our history portion. Why don't we go ahead and get into the, the technical data portion of this and start off with a little bit of cartridge association. On the left is the 6.5 by 55 millimeter Swede. In the center is the 7.5 by 55 millimeter Swiss. And on the right is the 30-06. Now, the 7.5 by 55 millimeter Swiss original military loading was a 174 grain Spitzer, well, the GP-11 being a 174 grain Spitzer type projectile with a boat tail, as well as a pronounced cantilever for crimping the cartridge case into. The cartridge casing itself is 55 millimeters in length, bottlenecked, rimless, and center primed, of course. Velocities coming in between 2500 and 2700, and bullet loadings available from 150 grains to about 200 grains. Now, something that's interesting is that though the 7.5 by 55, this is kind of getting into a little bit more of our contextual portion here, though the 7.5 by 55 is about eight millimeters shorter than the 30-06, it actually has similar volume because it's a little bit of a fatter cartridge. So really, a savvy hand loader could load this cartridge up to similar, if not faster velocities than the 30-06. We'll talk about that more here in a bit. Now, the vast majority of the ammunition that you'll find out there for the 7.5 comes from PPU. I do have some Graf and Sons ammunition, but pretty much the majority of the ammunition that I have on hand for my K31 is from Graf, is from, excuse me, from PPU, which is kind of, uh, PPU is kind of the best friend of any military surplus rifle and handgun shooter for that matter, because they have a very diverse product catalog with a lot of cartridges that other manufacturers just don't carry. Now, for the majority of that ammunition, you'll find 174 to 180 grain soft tip ammunition, which theoretically would make this a pretty fantastic hunting cartridge, especially since it's right in line with like a 308 in overall length, a little bit longer than a 308. However, one of the issues that you run into with the 7.5 millimeter Swiss, and it's unfortunate to have to bring in rifles into this contextual discussion, but it is a pretty important part because really the only rifles that have ever been produced for this cartridge are Swiss military rifles, both the whole series of Schmidt Rubens up to the K31, and then the Sturmgewehr 57, which is really not even available in the United States for the most part. So you don't really have rifles that are readily adaptable to modern optics and all that kind of stuff. So if you're looking for a brush rifle, or you're living in a location where you primarily expect to be taking fairly close up shots on game, this cartridge doesn't really do a lot for you in long range type applications. So if you're hunting more out west, uh, Colorado on west, then you might run into issues with being able to accurately engage or ethically engage game, depending on where it is that you're hunting. If you're you know, hunting mountain peak to mountain peak, iron sights might be a bit of a tall order to be able to ethically and cleanly dispatch that game, let alone if you're hunting you know, wide open plains and all that type of stuff. Stocking becomes very difficult and long range shots become much more the norm. Now, if you go more east into you know, Georgia and those types of places, it may not be as much of an imposition to utilize this cartridge with iron sights. It's just something you have to take into account in the overall discussion there. Now, as a military cartridge, no one else ever really adopted this either. I find it interesting that the length 
is right in line with like the 7.5 by 54 millimeter French as well as the 7.62 by 5.1 or what we would colloquially know as the 308. In that, this puts the, the Swiss a little bit ahead of the game lengthwise in a you know lighter rifle cartridge is what we see in the battle rifle going into the future. So that allowed their cartridge to be readily adaptable to the Sturm Gewehr 57 and have a select fire battle rifle option for the military without having to completely change cartridges like the United States did from the 30 out six down to the 308. However, volume wise, it's still grossing similar capabilities to a 30 out six in that fatter cartridge casing, which would ultimately mean like larger magazines and all that kind of stuff, which if you look at the design of the Sturm Gewehr 57, it is kind of a, a tall design overall. And that might, I think that's where that originates from in this case. All right, guys, I think that pretty much covers kind of our con contextual portion of this discussion here. What have I got lined up for comparison aspects. So I thought long and hard about comparison then. First, I tried to compare it to the 7.5 by 54 millimeter French because I thought that would be very interesting to have these two kind of oddball 7.5 millimeters go against each other. However, I had difficulty finding an app or even website that would allow me to compare those two cartridges on charts. So. I had to drop the 7.5 French. Then I thought about the 7.65 Argentine and ran into the same overall issue. Ultimately, what I decided to do was to go with the 30-06. Why in this case? Well, because one of the things that I find interesting, going back to rifles yet again, is that the Schmidt Rubens and later the K31s, as well as the 1903 and all of its iterations, were more or less designed to be target rifles that happened to be used in battle. The 1903 Springfield was designed for shooting long-range target matches at Camp Perry. And the Schmidt Rubin and the K31 have been utilized to do the same type of thing in Switzerland. So you can kind of see what I'm getting at where let's discuss, let's compare cartridges that were utilized in these type of match style rifles. Now, the other issue that I ran into here is that the only app that I had that had any information for my or for the 7.5 by 55 millimeter Swiss cartridge, which would be Ballistic AE, only had it in the 181 grain soft tip loading. But if that's what we can get a hold of, that's what we can get a hold of. And in today's ammunition discussion, that would be a very viable option. And there's a wide variety of 180 grain 30 out six loadings we can also compare it against. So I'll go ahead and roll in the charts here. As we can see, 30-06 is maintaining a little bit flatter trajectory and more retained velocity throughout its travel. And the 7.5 Swiss is falling behind pretty rapidly, which is not what I expected when we consider that the volume between these two cartridges is pretty much the same. So why are we seeing this issue here? And that is because we are looking at factory loaded ammunition. Just because the 7.5 Swiss has the ability to be loaded up to be just as quick as the 30-06 does not mean that it is being loaded up that way by your average manufacturer. You would have to be a hand loader with that specific goal in order to be able to achieve that based off of what I'm seeing with these findings. Now, of course, I don't have an expansive collection of data to be able to compare off of a wide variety of 7.5 millimeter Swiss ammunition, at least not from the same resource, which is kind of a key part, in my opinion, when it comes to comparison. If I don't have the same references to be able to utilize against one another, it kind of fudges the credibility overall of the results. So I would prefer to be able to utilize the same app and this is pretty much what I have to be able to work off of. But it makes a lot of sense because this is pretty common for previous service cartridges with the exception of the 30-06 and that is only because the 30-06 is native to the United States for in order to be germane to this topic. If I were talking about loads in Switzerland, it might be a completely different discussion. There might be more things available there for that homegrown cartridge than there would be in the United States that has less of an interest in it. The 30-06, on the other hand, has been a longtime fan favorite in the United States. It was a long-standing service cartridge and has been a widely popular, wildly popular hunting cartridge as well. So there's a ton of options that are available for it. There's pretty much every, just like in 308 and a lot of other cartridges out there in the United States, you can get what it is that you're after. 
7.5 millimeter Swiss, not so much. And I think in this case, that is why the 30 6 more or less handily beats it in this case. But when you're talking about service cartridges, prior service cartridges in general, if they didn't make an effective leap into the commercial side of things, you're not gonna see a wide variety of loads. We've seen it in the 6.5 millimeter Swede discussion video, which yes, there's a you know, link in the description of that video, but there's a ton of options in Sweden and the surrounding areas for that cartridge, but not nearly as many in the United States. 6.5 Carcano, it's hard enough to find any ammunition for 6.5 Carcano, let alone what it is that you want, so on and so forth. You see the same thing kind of over and over and over again. All right, guys, what are my recommendations when it comes to the 7.5 millimeter Swiss? What I recommend it for duty type use. Well, maybe if it was like the 1960s and you had a Sturmgewehr 57 fighting in you know some sort of broad open conflict, sure. But when you consider the rifles that are available, you know I can really only speak for the United States, but when you consider what rifles are available for it here, in conjunction with the cartridge, sure, if you could find a Sturmgewehr 57, it wouldn't be the worst option, but the cartridge wouldn't play a role into whether or not that was a good choice. The rifle has much more to do with that in that case. Well, what about for self-defense type purposes? So the 7.5 Swiss is capable, but if you're talking about utilizing it in a self-defense type situation in the home and you have neighbors nearby, that's going to be problematic because you are very likely to blow a hole clean through your house and into the neighbors. And I can't imagine that they really like that. For Outside of the home, defensive type options, again, a lot of that comes down to the rifle. The cartridge is perfectly capable, but whether or not the rifles are up to snuff is a completely different discussion and one covered in a previous video, link in the description. Well, how about for hunting type uses? As was discussed before, if you're doing some type of brush hunting with this cartridge, it is more than potent enough. If you were decide to do a custom hunting rifle based around this cartridge, I would implore you to hand load in that case because there I think you will finally get the full long range capability paired with an optic up to the task in order to be able to really pull performance out of this cartridge. I, I do think it is rather wasted by the factory loads available out on the market. This would be a sterling example of why you should hand load, but you're also going to need a rifle that is up to the task and that's a key, key portion of this discussion. All right, guys. Well, in that case, what is my use for the 7.5 millimeter Swiss? Well, I have a Schmidt, or a, excuse me, I have a K31, and I do intend to hunt with it at some point. Though I need to make some adjustments to the sights in order to be more confident in my ability to be able to take game with it. And for that type of purpose, I would prefer to hunt more close-in, brushy type areas. I have every bit of confidence that at the same distances that I would engage with the 30-30, the 7.5 millimeter Swiss will perform well above the capabilities of the 30-30 Winchester. So we're talking out to 200 yards. I would be far happier to engage with that flatter shooting cartridge than the 30-30, which has quite a bit more drop out to distance. I could absolutely see myself utilizing it to take deer, you know, white tails or mule deer, something along those lines, anything that I would want to hunt relatively close. Uh, I would even consider it to be accessible for close-up shots on elk and moose. Though, I don't know, moose are pretty big, and I don't know how close I actually want to get to a moose when I shoot it, so there's something to keep in mind as well. All right, guys, I think that pretty much covers my thoughts on this particular subject. Hope you guys found this interesting, and that's pretty much what I got. Have a good day.